Liberator is another one of the division's named high-end weapons. It falls under the Assault Rifle category, meaning it's most effective at close to medium ranges. It's based on the lightweight M4 model, which is also obtainable in-game as an unnamed variant, but it also has a real-world counterpart based on the M4 Colt or the AR-15. Being a named high-end, the Liberator comes with a fixed set of perks, but it also comes with a unique skin that is available only to this particular weapon. In this case, it's a sleek white silver paint job that covers the majority of the weapon with a couple of gold details and some matte black attachments. As an aside, in the real world, the M4 carbine is heavily used by the United States Armed Forces and is widely replacing the M16 rifle. Now, the Liberator Assault Rifle can be crafted using a high-end blueprint that can be purchased from the special gear vendor in the base of operations. As with all weapons, crafting can yield a varying range of outcomes, and the Liberator's base damage values can fall within the ranges you see here. Do of course bear in mind that this value is then boosted by your agent's attribute distribution, so what you see here for me will likely differ somewhat for your own agent. Either way, if we take a look at the stripped down version that I crafted, it has a base damage value of 6,946, it can fire 850 rounds per minute, and it has an initial magazine size of 30. Again, do bear in mind that guns in the division drop and are crafted with varying damage ranges, so the 6.9k you see here will likely vary somewhat if you get this yourself in game. Now assault rifles, unlike SMGs, marksman rifles, etc, do not come with any sort of natural headshot or critical damage bonus. So beyond the base values, this weapon has above average accuracy and reload speeds, a relatively low effective range on the overall scale, but above average when compared to some other assault rifles, and on the stability front, despite what the bar says here, this thing has some pretty intense recoil, so you're either going to need to compensate for that with mods, or just learn to control it. Either way, if you want to use this to shoot anyone beyond medium distances, burst firing is the way to go. Now moving on from there, the other thing unique to these named high-end weapons is that they come with a fixed set of talents. The Liberator has two that require unlocking, with specific attribute distributions, and a third that is active at all times. The active talent is Talented. Killing a target with this weapon increases skill power by 8% for 13 seconds. The effect does not stack, and killing a new target refreshes the timer. Next up you have Dominant, and this requires 1889 points in both firearms and electronics to unlock, and the talent makes it so that every kill performed while your signature skill is active reduces the cooldown on your other skills by 8%, so if you were running a skill power build, Talented and Dominant together could make a pretty nice combination. One talent to increase skill power, another one to reduce skill cooldowns while your signature skill is active, so some nice synergy there. And then finally you have Competent. This requires 1,417 points in firearms and 1,889 points in electronics, and this talent increases weapon damage by 13% for 10 seconds after using a skill. So for illustration purposes, without the talent active, I deal 6,946 damage to the body. And with this talent active, after using a skill, I deal 7,849 damage. Note that I use support station and not a skill that further increases my overall damage. So again, to reiterate my point, if you're running a skill power build, this weapon could definitely have its uses. You have talents that both increase skill power and reduce cooldowns, but on top of that, a talent that increases weapon damage after using a skill. So there is a nice bit of synergy here. Now with the talents out of the way, let's run some quick tests in the firing range. Again, with no mods applied, completely stripped down as it comes out of the box, a critical shot deals 17,261 damage. A regular headshot deals 12,156 damage, and a body shot deals 6,946 damage. Do of course bear in mind that your final damage numbers will of course take into account mods, gear and your attribute distribution, but for the purposes of this review, this is how it functions as a base model. As a final note, your reload speed on this weapon, again without mods, comes in at around 4 seconds. Now we've taken a look at the weapon stats, talents and some basic firing range damage numbers, let's run a quick field test in a controlled environment. We're going to run through the very first room on the Madison Field Hospital mission on hard mode. This first room has a total of 5 enemies, and we're again going to be using the weapon with no mods applied. The time starts from the second I set foot through the door, and after running the same room back to back 5 times, the average clear time comes in at around 40 seconds. Bear in mind the nature of the encounter means you're not fighting every enemy on the same elevation, but regardless it's not a bad time when you factor in the lack of mods and the effective range. So. Having now taken a look at this weapon and what it can do, the question is, what is it good for and is it worth it? And as mentioned, I think given the talent synergy, this weapon could definitely have its uses in skill power builds. There's no denying that there are plenty of unnamed high-end assault rifle variants out there that are far superior to this weapon in terms of basic performance. 
but the one thing you get with these named weapons is fixed talents. So if you're running a skill power build and you want a weapon with a guaranteed outcome that will slot right into the way you're playing, it could be worth giving a shot. You will need to throw on some mods to help tame that recoil because it does kick quite hard, and I'd also recommend throwing on an extended mag as you'll burn through those base 30 rounds in no time given the fire rate. However, if you only have limited Phoenix credits, you're after an assault rifle and you can only buy one, I would advise looking elsewhere. These named high-end weapons may seem appealing given their names and their fancy paint jobs, but more often than not, the unnamed variants are better and have more options given the random talent rolls. True, you won't always get what you want, but on the flip side, when you do, you also have the potential to get something you wouldn't get on a named high-end weapon. So something like the Black Market AK-74 is a great alternative. Now that's it for this weapon review, hopefully you guys enjoyed it, make sure you tune in next week where we'll be taking a look at the recently patched high-end SMG Midas, and of course if you guys do enjoy the video, a like would be hugely appreciated, comment down below and let me know what you thought of the video, and thanks for watching, take it easy, catch you next time, peace out.